Firstly, welcome everyone to the session, How AI Can Assist Script-Based Automation by Shannon Lee. We are glad that they can join us today. Without further delay, over to you, Shannon. Awesome. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. And uh, very excited to be here at Appium Conference and speaking to you all today uh, around hey, how AI can assist script-based automation. So let me share my screen. So again, my name is Shannon Lee. I am a developer evangelist for Cobaton, here to bring you all the good word of technology, especially in the quality and quality en engineering realm. So today we'll be talking about how AI can assist in script-based mobile application automation. So to start, so we're gonna kind of lay down the basics, some framework or some groundwork first so that we can kind of understand the issues that are at play, how AI can help and how that's important in our automation efforts. So to start, what is mobile application automation? I'm sure you all are aware here that we're attending Appium Conference, but of course it's the use of tools to automate a test case on a mobile device for, for an application. Uh, it, the, main, the main goal is to automatically validate the expected behavior of your, applica of your application. Otherwise log and identify defects and aggressions within your application. So by automating your test cases, this significantly reduces the testing time cycle. So if you have your, say, say you have your regression suites automated, your regression cycle time will reduce significantly thanks to automating your, your test cases given your mobile application. So we all know the traditional programmatic perspective, right? So we call this script-based automation. So it's developing lines or, or I'm sorry, developing scripts or lines of code to drive automation on a mobile device. Those who are usually uh, dealing with automation are more quality engineers, quality analysts. Um, we do just have a software testers, uh, automation engineers, someone who has a background or knowledge or relevant knowledge in uh, programming or in mobile application development. And from a pro programmatic perspective is that you can automate so imagine the testing pyramid where you have UI at the top and unit tests at the bottom. You're able to automate between unit tests and the UI and everything in between through a, the pro, traditional programmatic approach that is script-based automation. So for example, Appium, you're able to automate your UI via Appium. Say for unit testing, you're able to automate using PyTest, et cetera. We have a lot of automation tools out there to uh, allow you to achieve automation again from all the way from UI testing to to unit testing. And we all have one main goal that we can all share, and that is reaching for the dream. The dream being having a fully automated test suite where you can achieve a continuous integration, continuous point deployment. You don't want to spend so much time manually testing for every regression cycle. You want to be able to just automate that, have nice, reliable test scripts on top of it so that you can focus on additional testing because we all know that the testing checklist is never ending so that you can again focus on additional testing and not have to worry about or I'm sorry not have to continually do a manual regression or manual testing that can be so repetitive and so time consuming and so just uh, it ends up being the biggest bottleneck within the DevOps cycle is because we want to hold on to our quality so we want to make sure we're testing correctly and thoroughly However, we're in this day and age where everything is so fast paced and we want the next release, next release, next release. That ends up being the biggest bottleneck in the testing cycle is, is comes to quality. So with that, only about only 20% of quality teams are able to achieve 90% or more in automation. So it's only about a fifth of us that can actually achieve full automation. At the very least, it's beneficial to have your critical smoke test suite automated to help testing efforts because uh, if you have your, even if you can't get to everything or achieve automation everywhere, to at least have your critical test cases automated can help significantly as well. So we're all kind of reaching for that dream of, of being fully automated. But in mobile application automation, this, as the numbers show, can be very difficult to achieve. So let's take a moment to paint the picture of why mobile test automation is so hard to, to achieve. So we're going to compare web-based automation to mobile app automation in the realm of when it started, when it was developed and released, and so on. So we know that web development began around, you know, end of the 80s. 
uh, we see commercial websites emerge in the mid 1990s. And then Selenium has become a thought in 2004 and then has been had time to really focus on web-based automation given Selenium that is now com combined with WebDriver, aka Selenium 2.0 that was released in 2011. In 2008, we're seeing apps for smartphones begin and then Appium was, was released in 2014. So the picture here I'm trying to paint is that there has been at least uh, amongst 15 years of being able to research, develop, and release web-based automation tools compared to the roughly only six years of time passing given smart or giving mobile application automation. So we're at a loss for about seven years there, right? Or I'm sorry, eight, or I'm sorry, uh, nine years there, right? Loss of those years. We all, again, all know that technology is so fast paced, it's almost exponentially growing. So that nine years of lost time to research and develop for mobile application automation tools can really hinder mobile application testing. So what we call that is we say that mobile application testing is more of an infancy as we're seeing, as we're still kind of in the timeline of these new tools emerging and how we can kind of really figure out what is the best uh, testing route for automation. Also web-based and web or mobile application, they kind of have far different rules of the road. So when web-based automation came to, or I'm sorry, when web development came to play in general, it was, very, it was a very pioneering movement. It was more of a kind of wild, wild west of technology. Anything goes, everyone's very excited about this new discovery and development that everyone's more open source, sharing code, sharing information, and being able to build, build this network that is commercial-based web, uh, websites. Uh, that it, they're easily built. So we're just using with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with some variations in between. And it's very, more, like I mentioned, inclusive because again, everyone is at the forefront of this new technology. We're just excited. We, wanna, we want to collaborate with others so that we can start building websites and web development. As we move down the timeline, as, as mobile apps are developed, we're seeing a little bit of a difference here. So let's say Android and iOS are obviously the best examples as they're the two kind of leading the market. And they kind of wanted to make, make their own rules for their application. So a little bit less inclusive. I'd say Apple is probably the best example of this. Plus mobile applications, it being on a mobile device is far more complicated. So the nature of itself is complicated as well as the development can be complicated with that because you have Android apps that are being developed in Java, but then you have iOS apps that are being developed in Swift and Objective-C. So we're already at a huge divide. You can see this huge divide is already coming into play. And then with those are all the different devices, all the different operating systems, all the different versions of those operating systems. And so we see that device fragmentation is now rearing its ugly head. That it also can be a huge hindrance to mobile application testing and mobile application automation. So with that, I'm gonna go on and dive into some advantages and disadvantages of script-based automation. So the pros of this is that, of course, fast testing. So we, we all know that automating a test case is far faster than manually doing it. So if you have one automated test case that takes, takes 10 seconds versus the 10 minutes you would do it manually, that saves you a significant amount of time. From a script-based perspective, it also gives you far more granular control over your automation. So we're all pretty familiar with kind of being at the command line of things, being able to programmatically drive your automation and what, you, what you'd like for it to achieve. And again, you can automate between unit tests and UI tests and everything in between from a programmatic pr uh, approach. It also offers parallel testing on multiple devices. You can easily integrate it into your CI CD pipeline. And like I mentioned, this reduces time and cost significantly. Of course, Appium is a great example of of a script-based automation framework. Some downsides to this though, is again, it's trying to emphasize that it's still in its infancy as web-based automation. So we still have a lot to learn. We still have a lot to develop. We're still trying to, again, keep up with these very uh, fast paced releases and new abilities and a far more complex nature than just web-based automation or just web-based development in general. So with that, you find yourself kind of instrumenting multiple tools. So you have X, Y, and Z tools to help you in your, in your mobile test, testing efforts that 
in itself can be very tedious and frustrating because you have to instrument all these tools together to, to work synchronously with one another. And so all these dependencies can get very complicated very quickly. Setup can be frustrating and, and, and time consuming. And so again, your efforts are kind of just hindered in that sense. And you have limitations to open source frameworks that can't, again, can't keep up with fast paced technology. We're, so we're in the day and age with your phones where you have image injection, you have bio authentication, you have varying network conditions and locations, et cetera. So you have, again, all these far more complex nature of a mobile device, mobile application than compared to web. And so it makes it that much harder to achieve automation from a mobile perspective. And as you are automating, you're realizing that these tests can be extremely brittle and unreliable which leads to more time maintaining scripts. So you have a lot of, you spend, let's say X amount of time coding out a script, you run it and you're hitting all these issues with it, or it might pass you have a false positive, it might fail, it might be a false negative. So you're really not sure, is this a flaky test or is this just broken code? We, it's hard, I, then I have to do additional testing to kind of find the root cause of what's going on. So this time kind of stacks on top of each, uh, on one another, leaving you unable to even achieve automation in any sense because you're still busy tweaking or mainly tweaking your code or mainly testing in itself as well. There was a study that uh, showed that anytime you, so say you have an automated suite, anytime there was a new release of that application, it took an average of two weeks to fix and remediate every script to continue automation so that your automation is still reliable or is still useful given that release, which is, is wild. So if we're seeing very hard to maintain, very flaky tests. Uh, this creates uh, quality blind spots because again, you don't know if that's a false negative or a false positive. And then as you're trying to remediate your scripts, you end up getting a lot of lines of code and that ends up just kind of resulting in just bloated test suites and bloated, bloated scripts in itself as well. So you end up, it's very counterproductive is a good word to put it. We are trying to achieve this automation, but it just feels like you have so much stacked against you that it's, that it's hard to continue in mobile uh, application automation given the cons of the programmatic approach that is script-based automation. So here's where we see that codeless and scriptless automation enters the chat. So this is a GUI that allows users to either record manual testing uh, and generates automated tests without a single line of code. So that's where we see codeless or scriptless. Uh, so you can do this a couple of ways. You have record and playback, you have drag and drop, and then we're also seeing machine learning and AI technologies that are offering scriptless automation. So AI assistance and scriptless automation. So I call it the AI QA. Uh, so imagine AI is just kind of one of your team members helping you in your, auto, in your testing efforts. <clears throat> of course, AI QI will never be able to completely replace testers by any means or quality engineers, uh, but they, the, they are there to help and assist us in our testing efforts. So this helps accelerate mobile application automation. Uh, by playing catch up to the web-based automation and capabilities um, help, helps uh, helps rectify those pain points of script-based automation cons. So with scriptless, you're able to handle more far more complicated testing scenarios uh, than say from uh, trying to code it out yourself. And then with drag and drop or record and play, it, it's a faster creation of your of your automated test suite or test cases. But again, the biggest drawback to that is that you lose that granular control. You lose that ability to kind of really dive into your code of what your automation, what you want your automated script to do. So you're kind of at the you're kind of at the expense of the AI QA versus you yourself driving the automation. And from AI, from a scriptless perspective, it's more from a, a top layer down. So you're usually automating from the UI and can potentially get some end-to-end -end tests in there um, hitting the API. But you, it's hard for you to reach even further down into integration testing or further down the testing pyramid. So top-down approach, uh, it, it's useful, but sometimes it's not, it's not gonna cover the entire testing, uh, uh, all the testing that needs to get done. So this is where we see that AI assistance meets script-based automation. So why, let's take a moment to say, or to talk about why script-based automation is so flaky and unreliable. So one of the biggest culprits is that the element is not found on the page. So you just spend some time coding out one of your test cases and you run it and you realize that it fails instantly because 
element on page not found. So you can't even continue to the next test step because an element is not found given your automated efforts. And this is, it, it, there are different locator strategies and this can be prevalent for all locator strategies. Some not so much than others, but still a recurring issue no matter what locator strategy you're using. So of the locator strategies, we can kind of go down each one and talk about what they are and pros and cons of each of those as well. So when you find an element by, let's say class name, ID or, or name, this is going to be something that's, uh, it's going to be able to find an element by a more platform specific UI object. So it might be different from Android than iOS. And so that is, you, you end up having branching code trying to meet both Android and iOS, again, in your automated efforts. And again, that device fragmentation that is just honestly the worst in mobile application testing, but we all, we all live through it. But there's also a X path. So X path, uh, it guarantees any element in the UI can be found and the XML, but that is extremely brittle due to changes in the app design. So X path is, is old reliable, but at the same time, not old reliable. So if you don't have a class name ID or accessibility ID or unique IDs, you can still find an element via XPath regardless, but those XPaths can be, again, extremely brittle due to changes in the app design that might change the XPath itself. So the XPath will break given the next release possibly. There's also accessibility and unique IDs. This is the most, uh, this is the best testing strategy in your mobile application automation. So unique IDs are given to elements to ensure that, to ensure the correct selection in your automation efforts. And, but the only downside to this one is that you have to actually go in and start adding element IDs within, within the source code itself. So within the UI code and either some individuals might not have the ability to do that themselves. So they need to ask the developers, Hey, do you mind putting in these unique IDs? And that ends up putting more work on the developer hands. And, and there's kind of a snowball effect of just a more work added to be able to select these elements for, for automation. So best route to go, but it can also kind of have its own fallbacks. Um, and then there's also native apps that are, have specific locator strategies. So these are more reliable in finding elements on native apps. So or, uh, we have Android specific locator strategies of uh, Android UI automator of find element. And then we also have iOS specific locator strategies. Uh, that's more of a class change strategy, but this eliminates your ability to, to have cross-platform capabilities in your, autom in your automation. So each locator strategy again has its pros and has its cons and unique ideas is, is the best practice, but it's not always a, a, a achievable. So let's, let's take a moment also just to just dive into how does AI assist in script-based automation, right? This is what I feel like I'm like leading to everyone's on the, uh, on the edge of their seat. So we're gonna have this from a two-pronged approach. So with any machine learning algorithm, of course you need a baseline to start the training data. So we're gonna have training data that's fed into a machine learning algorithm uh, that learns from your application via inspect element and analyze element. So again, we're gonna have this two-pronged approach. So we're gonna capture the object by inspecting and we're going to map elements by analyzing. And to start, so again, how mobile application automation still of its infancy. So XPaths are to start and then additional locator strategies will fall thereafter. So we're kind of we're kind of seeing ourselves in the middle or in the start of the ability for AI to assist script based, again, starting with the XPath. And that being that the XPath again can locate any element in the XML without even having an assigned name or ID or any anything of that sort. So how do we capture the object by inspecting it? So first of all, let's say I have my application and I, everyone is familiar with Appium Inspector or you know, Inspect Element, something that we do have those tools available that will automatically generate the XPath for you that you can easily just copy and paste into your script, in your, into your code, right? Say so if I wanted to drive my automation to touch, to tap the get started button here on my application. So with that and, and the expect and um, inspect, it'll, it'll give me that the X path, you can do it by, let's say using the text, get started. So 
off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and use that in my, in my scripting. I know get started is going to be a good keyword to, or text to, to, um, to use off of for my next path. And so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and code out with doing just that. And so what happens then when the text changes? So say if we went from, you know, get started or start now, or again, the text is just completely different or a new button is added. And then the XML is completely, is now, has now changed due to the design app change. This X path ends up breaking and ends up any run thereafter will result in the element not being found because of that broken X path. So what can the AI uh, assistance do in helping uh, kind of recover this scenario? So one, based from the baseline, um, the original script, the AI has the ability to scan the scan and isolate object to object. So we hear uh, is the hierarchy of my application XML. I have my get started object here. If that were to change and it were to break in some way, the artificial intelligence or the power of AI has the ability to again isolate and capture each object to object as its metadata, so that when it breaks, it can present to you the next best technical identifier given the original technical identifier, if that makes sense. And we'll do, I'll do a walkthrough of that too in just a moment. But takeaway is that from this approach, able to scan and isolate every object, so object to object, so that it has the ability to search and find in a sense and present to you again, that next best technical identifier or the next, or the, the best fit X path. So it offers a precise X path given that uh, for the element in question that it, and it re, um, relays that information to fast. So it's able to find that element very quickly, faster than doing it manually. And so you can quickly remediate your flaky S path to stabilize and continue automation. So uh, essentially, if I were to have to continue tweaking my code, my, my app beam script, I have to go back into the inspector, find the X path, paste it into there, run it again. It might fail again, go back and forth. You can do a lot of back and forth, a lot of uh, just kind of frustrating efforts. So here is essentially the AI doing that, that hard work for you. And at doing that, it can do it very fast, far faster than you can do it. So that's always a great advantage to that. Now, if we talk about from the other approach, so um, we had capture object by uh, inspecting and now we can map elements by analyzing. So again, you have your baseline session that's running your uh, Appium script and all that information from that run is being fed into the machine learning algorithm. The machine learning alg algorithm is coming in from one approach of scanning and uh, isolating object by object and is also coming at a another approach that the moment you were to touch, the moment the automation interacts with that element on the page, the AI powered engine will actually pin that element to its relevant place in the XML hierarchy. So I have this GIF to the, to the right as an example. The moment I hit that, the moment I tap that pay, that pay element or that button is now pinned to the relevant place in the XML hierarchy. So if that button were to move over here, move over here, move over here or over here, it would still be pinned to the XML hierarchy to then report to you that new X path or what X path is relevant to that element. So this is, gives us the ability to actually map elements across the page. So this is something that I think we're, we're now seeing in the day and age of more dynamic applications. So if you have a unique ID or not unique ID, if you have a, uh, an ID of a drop down or ID of a button two or something, and you run your application, that might change if another button is added or if, if a drop down and um, if, a, if a accordion index expanded. So those element IDs are, are dynamic, they're changing. So you can't necessarily get it from that technical identity, from that selector. So to have the ability to actually, you know, say pin that element to the actual XML within the, uh, the hierarchy of it, no matter where that element is going on the page, it, it will also be pinned to the, to the the X path within that XML, even if it's changing, if that makes sense. So being able to map elements across the stream. Um, this is great for uh, mobile applications that are dealing with uh, gaming or even just, again, those dynamic applications where 
these elements are, uh, their selectors are changing frequently. Okay, so again, we have that two pronged approach. So we're capturing the object, we're scanning and isolating and capture object by object so we can learn from your application. And so if the next XPath comes and it's failing, we, the AI, excuse me, not we, the AI, AI will analyze the placement of the given XPath and then report back kind of um, the next objects relate, related to within that XPath to present the more stable XPath, if that makes sense. And then we're also able to map elements. So by analyzing your application, we're able to map your element across the page, again, by using the interaction movement. So tapping or swiping or things of that nature will uh, pin the element UI element to the actual relevant place in the XML. So even as that does change, it will still report the correct X path for you. And with that two-prong approach, we're able to have a very anti-flake script-based mobile automation. So it's something that I think is very exciting to talk about because I know that not being able to find elements on the page or one of those biggest blockers of your automation efforts is, is something of that sort that can be, it sounds, it sounds so minuscule, but it can add on a tremendous amount of effort and work on your end to tweak and maintain and remediate your scripts time after release, after release, after release. So with a with AI able to assist script-based automation that reduces that time significantly, it won't take you two weeks to remediate your scripts. It might take you a, a two days to remediate your scripts given AI assistance. And that leaves you far more time for the other important things like automating in the next test case or just performing additional testing in general. Because again, we know that the checklist for testing is honestly never ending. And also in terms of the quality uh, or testing being kind of one of the bigger bottlenecks of the release cycle. So when you're able to have a more reliable autom automated scripts that reduces your maintenance time, that will then also increase your testing, reducing your testing time. And so that will alleviate that bottleneck scenario that you can achieve continuous integration and continuous deployment. Because I think we're seeing from uh, the, um, Methodology, methodologies within testing, or I'm sorry, within Dev, DevOps itself, we first started the waterfall, we realized that's just, that's too long of time. That doesn't make any sense. So then we introduced Agile and we're now into these two week sprints, but even then in the world of technology today, that's too much time. We wanna get our releases out tomorrow. We wanna get it out as soon as we can, once it's ready, once it's tested, and once the testers and quality engineers kind of get that simple approval of, okay, good to push to production. <clears throat> so I'm going to walk through you all kind of a theoretical demo. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have all the resources with me today to do a physical demo for you all, but I can kind of, um, let's, we can do a walkthrough of it again to kind of show what the AI is doing and how it's assisting your, your script-based automation. So let's see it in action, right? Okay, so I have my application and I know I have my, my XML hierarchy within it as, as well. So it all starts, as I mentioned before, with a baseline run. This is going to be, again, what is the training data that's fed into the machine or learning algorithm. If you don't have this as a start, then what is it going to, how is it going to analyze your application? What is it going to kind of base off of, right? And something to note is that as you do additional automation runs using artificial intelligence, every run, all the data is still collected. So your, your testing actually gets a little bit more precise uh, time and time after the, you know, after the original baseline run. So with a baseline run, you can actually import your Appium script. And then the uh, AI tools usually have an API endpoint or something. So another cool thing is that you can actually stay within your command line. So I know a lot of with the script list, taking to the GUI and you're kind of doing it from a UI perspective, but we all uh, enjoy automation, we all enjoy kind of being in that command line space, kind of in our own environment. So AI can still live there and assist you as well. The AI QA can also be in the command line with you. So you'll run your Appium script. So your initial app, your, let's say ground zero Appium script. As you run it on a real device, all that metadata as it's running on a real device 
is being fed into the AI, uh, I'm sorry, machine learning algorithm. So say if my original Appium script has the X path of just grabbing the text of get started and I run that session, then the AI has a, a moment to one, scan my, my entire uh, XML and be able to capture each object as well as any time that the automation is interacting on the device itself. So you want it to, uh, let's say, tap this button. Once that uh, action is executed, which is equivalent to actually physically tapping, that's where you'll see that elements are being pinned within the XML also. So say if it runs the first time and it runs correctly, or I'm sorry, not well correctly, but it passes, right? Uh, there's, you're good to go. So say if you have subsequent runs thereafter, we just have a new release. We change the button from, instead of get started, we now have start now, or say we add a new button or we add a new, uh, some the app design app change that kind of just threw off and changed all the X paths. So now in this subsequent run, when we run that same Appium script, we're getting element cannot be found. And so with the AI assistance, it's going to bring to you a report thereafter that from scanning the XML and being able to capture object by object, we know what that original X path was or that element you're enter interacting with. We're going to start there first and then kind of work outward within the XML to find the next best fit technical identifiers to, to find the next precise X, X path for that element. From a, another, uh, and from the other approach, so once that element in the original baseline is pinned within the XML, even if the X path of your script changes or the X path within the XML changes, since it's pinned within the relevant placement of the hierarchy, it will then present to you the exact uh, X path uh, that is now, that is the new X path for that element. So again, you have being able to scan and analyze your XML entirely, as well as being able to pin elements within your XML allows the AI to present to you the correct or next best fit technical identifier that you can easily just copy and paste into your Appium script and run it thereafter, or we're, uh, let it remediate for you. And we're here, we're seeing that AI can also help you uh, by self healing scripts so that you don't have to just go in and copy paste or, or maintain it yourself. So with that, you're able to remediate flaky tests quickly and easily uh, for all your Appium scripts, which is, which is something that be, can be achieved so easily given, again, the AI assistance. And when I say it's reported, so it'll bring to the forefront for you a report of the next, of the X path, or, or again, you can remediate within the script itself. And, um, and we're seeing the self-help healing scripts. So something I kind of want to take note of this is that it that just, that significantly reduces your, your own personal time and effort of your Appium scripts of tweaking it, maintaining it, Things is going to be very tedious and counterproductive are now seeing its advantages given AI assistance. So to kind of recap and kind of um, bring it all together. So how AI assistance helps script-based automation. So with AI machine learning algorithms, you can help find elements on a page when locator strategies fail. That helps bridge the gap between, uh, or just helps bridge that time gap I mentioned previously. Um, and allows mobile application tools to keep up with fast paced releases. So we're, we're seeing a new complexity release almost, almost every next release or new release. So let AI kind of help you stay up to par with your automating efforts of what you need to automate at every complex testing scenario. And again, I mentioned it helps reduce time and maintenance of script-based automation um, tremendously. So that's, it kind of alleviates your own pain point, your own frustration. Uh, by again, assisting you in your, in your efforts. So a big takeaway, the biggest takeaway is that with AI assisting, so we see AI assisting in scriptless, but again, the cons of that was that you, you kind of lose that granular control. You kind of, from that top down, you don't have as much uh, control over your scripts. You're kind of at the expense of the scriptless automation. But here, the growing trend or, or, you know, as we're moving even forward down the timeline of just technology in itself, and we're seeing all that AI can do and how uh, machine learning alg algorithms can be so beneficial in, in, in any realm of technology, really. Uh, you're able to retain that granular control, retain that programmatic approach 
so that you can go in from the command line or for have your scripting and be able to call API endpoints and, and be able to, to continue to programmatically uh, get more fine tuned in your automation efforts and then still have that AI assistance with you to keep your automation going forward, to spend less time maintaining and remediating, spend more time on automating, more time testing and, uh, and be able to uh, achieve the dream of fully automated test cases and test suites that will also just help your team deliver and release faster. So with that, I'm gonna open up to any questions that you all may have um, re regarding artificial intelligence and script-based automation. If there are any questions, you guys can put it in the Q&A section. And there is one which I will read out. Just give me a minute. Awesome, you're good. Yeah, yeah. How feasible is the same mechanism work for scriptless automation? So it's kind of the little sister of scriptless automation. So scriptless automation started first with artificial intelligence. And this moment, we're already kind of looking at the hierarchy where, or XML, we're already learning from your application. So we're able to present to you uh, your, you just do one manual session. And now that turns into a scriptless test case, an automated test case. So very feasible from scriptless. It's now we're seeing it enter the script base. That's the more tricky part. And so that, because we want to retain that programmatic uh, control over your scripts. So again, we're seeing it already kind of done from scriptless, but moving on to script based and moving forward into however else AI can assist us and even possibly with uh, additional locator strategies, um, say with, you know, find by element or class or name. Uh, uh, one more question. Um, are, the, are the recommended locator updates applied directly or do you need to manually update, update your failing scripts for future runs? Um, which one is, oh wait, I see it in the chat, sorry. Yeah. Actually, no, I'm sorry, do you mind repeating that one more time? Yeah, are the recommended locator updates okay. applied directly or do you need to manually update your failing scripts for future runs? So you can do, it will offer both. So if the test fails itself, then it might not remediate thereafter, but it again, will report the correct X pass that you can then copy and paste and manually uh, remediate yourself. There are times though that we're introducing self-healing scripts so that if your AI has learned enough from your, autumn, from your runs, it has enough data, metadata with it, it will go ahead and insert the X path for you. And because it has that much more confidence in knowing that it is the correct X path. So again, we're seeing these self-healing scripts um, that will do it automatically. Okay, there is one more. As uh, someone who hasn't worked with AI yet, I'm sure, uh, I'm not sure how to even start. Uh, is the AI QA idea, if I'm pronouncing it right, idea uh, being used somewhere? Are there any good um, articles, tutorials anywhere? Yeah, so I don't have any resources off the top of my head at the moment to uh, uh, go through that topic. And I think I just, um, so with the AIQA, so that, that's kind of just like, it's a, a cute little name I gave it. Um, there are tons of, there are a lot of tools that do offer AI assistance, either from scriptless, codeless, or, for, or uh, so, Kobaton being the one who's offering the script-based uh, AI assistance, but there are actually quite a bit of sponsors at Appium Conference as well. Um, and I think additional, a couple of additional talks around artificial intelligence. So the best uh, resources actually are, are one attending this conference and kind of checking out other talks and other, and also going to the sponsors booth within the conference to chat with tools that do offer uh, artificial intelligence um, assistance, again, whether uh, more based from the script based, scriptless perspective. Uh, I wish I had more articles or tut tutorials for you. I'm so sorry, but um, definitely check out the sponsors uh, in Appium Conference and uh, open the conversation. Or even if you want to uh, meet me uh, after this presentation, um, I can give you some resources there. I just don't have anything at the, um, off the top of my, or at my hands at the moment. Right. And uh, there's 
one more question how can you train your ai test codes can you show me the source code are there any examples um so i don't have any at the moment so what the uh, the main idea of training behind it is that the algorithm itself usually it's going to be a tensorflow machine learning algorithm and every time you do a baseline run it just feeds into that algorithm and based off the uh and based off that specific algorithm one, it's continuously learning and continuously updating itself, given your subsequent automation runs. Uh, and two, and so that's in itself how it's how it's learning. And um, and then two is that anytime there are issues that arise and you need to remediate it, and say you're remediating by the locator strategy, or if you're remediating it by you know a, a text assertion that's off or something, um, every remediation also is fed into the machine learning algorithm that is then. Uh, going to kind of not necessarily correct itself, but update itself based on your actions. So you're coming at it from one, your automation runs, and two, you also working specifically uh, hand in hand with the AI to train the, the data to make sure that it then delivers subsequent runs and analy uh, analysis um, that is a little bit more precise given, given your automation. And the last question is any related projects that we can go through around this topic? So we have a project that is uh, in the works at the moment. And if you head to um, the Cobaton sponsors booth, they will be able to kind of give some more information around this project. Um, and, but it, it is still a work in, pro uh, pro uh, work in progress. So again, we're seeing this kind of new scenario happen. And further down the line, I'm sure that there will be more open source tools or I'm sorry, open source um, open resources available just at this moment, we're still seeing it kind of, you know, freshly kind of uh, come into play. So we end our Q&A session, Joe. Thank you so much. This was a great- Thank time. you. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate y'all taking your time uh, and discussing with me today around AI and assisting script-based automation. So thank you. Thank you so much, Annie.